Hey everyone, Kyle Mike here from MLive.com. Joined by Justin Rogers. Another tough loss for the Lions and coming out of that, um, the, the loss in Minnesota, Justin, is the health and the status and the performance of Matthew Stafford. Uh, it was a closely watched storyline coming into the season. Year seven for the guy, year two in the scheme. It was supposed to be this great, comfortable offense. Um, it's been the opposite of that, statistically speaking, and now health-wise. Um, with uh, the, the right arm injury, rib injury now, x-rays, possible broken bones. Uh, Kawa wouldn't say what his status is, but it's clear he, it, the possibility of missed playing time is there. The possibility of missed game time is there. What do you make of what's going on with Matthew Stafford? I don't expect him to miss any time. No, I said the same with DeAndre Levy, and surprise, he has missed two games now. Uh, so I guess anything is possible. Right. But, um, you know, we've, we've talked about this before. I, I think Stafford is... Uh, extremely tough. I think he will fight through the pain outside of his arm being broken, his shoulder being separated. I mean, something where he physically can't play. I think he would, you know, put on a flak jacket and play through some, you know, bruised or fractured ribs if it came to that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, what do you make of the performance at this point? Well, I think Stafford has not been good. The statistics are, are telling on that. Outside of that first half or really the first quarter plus against the Chargers, the Lions offense has been dysfunctional, I'll put it that way. Um, but I don't put it squarely on his shoulders. I think the biggest culprit has been the offensive line, which has given him um, very little protection. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the heat seems to be coming from his blind side. Riley Reef, I think, has had a, a pretty poor start to the, the season. Um, uh, he, I mean, he's got problems on the right side in Cornelius Lucas. Um, no matter what he does, it seems like he's got a guy in his face, and that's going to mess with the guy, both in terms of the sacks, the hits, the health, but also the mind games, too. And I think we saw late in that game against the Vikings, it looked to me like Stafford was almost a little trigger happy, you know, getting, the, getting rid of the ball a little faster than he had to, but just trying to ward off some more pressure and more hits because he was hurting. Um, I wrote the column about it. Um, you know, he was in the locker room uh, and that podium you know he had on the podium when you uh with the uh, with with the, with the recorders you can actually hear when he sits down you hear <sighs> two huge sighs like just to get the breath to be able to speak and he labored through that press conference at first i thought he was going to cry um <laughs> like from emotion but then i realized it was the pain it was the ribs he just couldn't speak the guy's in pain he, he can play through anything but he's in pain right now and um i think that comes from the offensive line not getting the receivers involved, uh, 16 yards rushing from his tailbacks. This, this thing, you, I don't even know where to start because not, no phase of the offense at this point is working for the Lions. Yeah, I, I start with the offensive line. You know, if the run game's not working, that's that's starts with the offensive line. If the pass rush is, is getting through in, in a quick fashion, again, starts with the offensive line. I know Stafford's responsible for calling some of his own protections, and, and that hasn't been flawless either. There's been too many free rushers this year. We've seen too many teams or too many players get free shots on him. Uh, you know, Reef hasn't been very good. The interior line has been very good, although I think many of Mermaids has actually played pretty yeah, well. I agree. Um, the right side's been a disaster, and, and we... We've highlighted this all offseason. It's not like uh, it was is something new. Uh, Cornelius Lucas has not been productive on the right yeah. side as he is on the left. Uh, you know, people expecting later and Waddle to come in and be the savior are going to be mm-hmm. sadly disappointed. Uh, I think Waddle is a um, an average player. I don't think he's bad, but I also don't think you know he's good. A lot of pressure came from that side when he was playing last year. A lot of sacks came from that side. Took a big down, uh, a step back, I guess, in, in year two and coming off ACL injury. I mean, that's the most important thing for an offensive lineman is to be able to bend and, and shift backwards. How's his knee going to hold up? I, I I just don't know. I think that was an area the Lions didn't address this offseason and I thought they, they should have um, and, you know, those those chickens are coming home to roost. The impression I get from the Wild situation is that physically he's healthy at this point, but performance-wise he's not back not to where he was last year. Um, I've peppered several people on and off the record about that seems to be that he's not just back to form of where he was you mentioned the struggles of where he was too so that's a little concerning um Caldwell you know I'd ask Caldwell directly is this guy as good as he was before the injury and he's like well you know we want our guys to be better well right between the lines that means you know he's not he's not back to where he was so that's a concern but with all that attention paid to Cornelius Lucas and Adrian Waddle and the injuries and the performance on the right side Riley Reef is off to his worst start in his career on the left side and that of course is is Stafford's blind side and so that's an issue too um the 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 offensive line for the second consecutive year the, there's, there's major issues there um and it's causing a lot of false starts uh, literally, literally and figuratively from the offense um and it's just this is a disjointed 
of production at this point. There's nothing working. What can you hang your hat on at this point? What is one thing, like maybe Golden Tate, maybe Eric Ebron. Ebron yeah, yeah, you know, Ebron has two touchdown catches and has been pretty consistent outside of the drop on third down against San Diego. Um, so that's encouraging. But outside of that, there's there's nothing really the Lions can hang their hat on as, hey, we can do this pretty well and we can get a first down if we need it. That's a huge problem. And because the breakdowns are in so many areas and there seemed to be so much confidence that this thing was going to be good coming into the year, I put it on the, on, on the coaching staff. Like It's, it's not like yeah. one player or one position group is, is failing and – and whatever, it's the, nothing is working, and it seems to be no plan or no identity from that the unit at this time. I put that on the coaches. Yeah, what's what's interesting is in previous years, teams didn't want to blitz the Lions. They they knew you know Calvin Johnson needed that extra attention. This year, they're they're still giving them that attention at the second level, but they're bringing the pressure. And the Lions' offensive line just seems clueless. There's mm-hmm. like I said, there's way too many times where where free rushers are coming. They're not picking up the blitzes. They're not picking up the stunts with consistency. And uh, Stafford's taking a beating. He's taking yeah. an absolute beating. He's he's performing okay when he's not. You know, when the time is there, uh, you know, he's he's still completing a reasonable percentage of his passes. Um, I, I would say the accuracy is about the same. You know, a lot of a lot of balls that are just a little off target, but but certainly catchable. Um, but how much of that is just because? As you mentioned, his mental clock is is really screwed up right now. He's right. he's playing with, I guess, a sense of urgency that he shouldn't yeah. have to at this stage of the year. Yeah, I saw him working with a trainer in the locker room off the side, just trying to get undressed. He needed help getting undressed, and once he took the long sleeve shirt off, you could see he's got bandaging around his left arm, uh, left uh, hand wrist area. He's got a bandage around the left forearm, elbow area. He's of course got the numb fingers and stuff at one point in his right hand because of the right elbow injury, um, taped fin- uh, toes. I saw one of his toes is, is blue under the nail and everything. This, this guy, it, it's week three. It's it's week three now, and so this guy's already beat up. And, yeah, the Lions have to figure out a way to protect him because there's no way at this rate Matthew Stafford can con- continue to take this kind of beating and, and still make it out there on Sunday. He's, he's going to get killed. Um, the Lions have to figure out how to, a way to keep him upright and fast. Bad week for that. Mm-hmm. Um, Denver comes to town. Uh, Von Miller, Demarcus Ware are Some great monsters on the edge. Yeah. Um, according to Pro Football Focus, those two guys lead the NFL number one and number two in quarterback pressures, uh, fifteen and twelve, I believe. <sighs> I mean, I, I I don't know what to tell Matthew Stafford. I mean, he's he's in trouble if if he's yeah. you know if he's gonna be run out for this game. Uh, I, I I can't say with any confidence yeah. that he'll finish it. Yeah, lines are off on Tuesday. Um, Wednesday, we're back to work. It'll be interesting to see if Stafford is out there practicing with the team. We'll be all over it all week. For Justin Rogers, I'm Kyle Mikey. We are M Live. Keep it right here.